On today's Cleveland Browns report, I don't want to talk about DeAndre Hopkins. I don't want to talk about trades or free agency or anything like that. I want to talk about the hype around the Browns right now, at least within the fan base, because yesterday's first minicamp session was intoxicating, right? It was great to see Deshaun Watson connect with his receivers, get into a rhythm, and the hype train is real, right? Even Thomas the Tank Engine is all aboard the Cleveland Browns fan base. So we're going to talk about the hype. Whether or not it's a good idea or if it's fair to buy into it right now, it's only June, it's seven on sevens, non-contact drills, but you know what? This is a fan base that doesn't get to enjoy hype like this very often in the offseason. Sure, there's been previous years where there's been excitement because it's been a new head coach or a new quarterback, and that brings new optimism, but this, this time it feels different. Now, I'm not. I, you, you know the hype is getting real when Daryl Ryder... <laughs> who is one of the biggest like pessimistic Browns fans out there and a pretty like vocal anti-Deshaun Watson guy when the trade got done, tweeted out, I couldn't think of any Browns quarterback I've watched that looked as good as Deshaun Watson did today in practice. Yes, it's June. Yes, it's practice. Yes, no pads either. And no, I'm not reserving hotels in Las Vegas for February, but honestly, that was a lot of fun to watch. If Daryl is in on the Cleveland Browns, which would be a first, you know it has to mean something if it's coming from him, right? By far one of the biggest Debbie Downer, uh, big J's in Cleveland following this team. So even if Daryl Ryder at 731 is at his home thinking about today's practice, you know that the hype is real because Daryl has not always been this optimistic or this, you know, um, in on Deshaun Watson, right? Back in December, he tweeted out, the Browns offense looks lifeless with Deshaun Watson. So if we can get him from December to do what he just said yesterday, clearly a lot of steps have been taken for even Daryl to buy in on Deshaun Watson and the Browns. But this was not the only re like good report that came out of the first minicamp practice. Chris Easterling, a great reporter for the team, tweeted out, Browns Amari Cooper starting to look like the old Amari after coming back from surgery. He was awesome to start the season, right? He had like seven touchdowns before Deshaun Watson came in and took over from Jacoby Brissett. But then the transition of Brissett to Watson paired with a core muscle injury where he said he was basically guy on one leg, it felt like. Yeah, I can see why he fell off a little bit. But now that you get Amari Cooper healthy with Deshaun Watson, an elite quarterback and an elite wide receiver, and that's just the start. We're not even getting to Donovan Peoples-Jones or Elijah Moore, let alone Nick Chubb and David Njoku. Yeah, the hype can feel really real right now with those guys at your disposal. The Browns themselves, like whoever's running the Twitter account for the team, they're even having fun with it. Everyone's having fun with the hype right now. And why not, right? QB1 was looking sharp to kick off minicamp today. There was a lot of rust. Everyone talked about how much time uh, was off between Watson's last game in Houston until he played again for the Browns in Houston. That is behind him now, and he is going to return back to that Pro Bowl elite NFL passing leader status that we all know and remember him as in Houston. ESPN Cleveland's Jake Trotter, who is kind of not as far as Darrell Ryder in terms of anti-Deshaun Watson, but he's definitely in that club. He's on the Mount Rushmore of reporters who did not like the trade when it went down. Watson was basically automatic, Jake Trotter, on the first day of Brown's mandatory minicamp. So even all the biggest doubters and naysayers are now coming to our side that Deshaun Watson is going to be an elite quarterback for Cleveland this season. And you know what? All are welcome. We're not going to shame anyone. Let's be nice, people. For all the doubters out there that weren't in on this because they were really upset they moved on from Baker, we can just let them join our team. We're just going to forget what they said before. We're not going to hold receipts. No grudges here. And you know what? As Michael Scott says, I am prepared to get hurt again. I'm not prepared to get hurt again because I don't envision getting hurt. That's how confident I am in the 2023 Cleveland Browns. I don't even have to make that joke or put that gif on Twitter. That's how good the Browns are going to be this year. And like I've said so many times before, if this roster was called the Dallas Browns, how different of a conversation it would be on ESPN's Get Up and Colin Coward and First Take and all those other shows. But because it's Northeast Ohio, because they don't get as much airtime as some of the other big franchises out there, and because the Browns have a track record of not being the best football team the last 20 years, no one's looking at them closely. Fine by me.
You don't want to put the Browns in Sunday Night Football? Don't worry. We'll win at noon. We'll win at 1 p.m. Eastern, 325 Central, 425 Eastern. Doesn't matter when or where. The Browns in 2023 are here. So if you are in on the 2023 Browns, like today's video. Or if you're not in on them, just comment me as well. Because I'm really not giving you an option to not be in on this team. That is how just overall like oozing confident I am that this team is going to deliver this season. When you look at Deshaun Watson's stats, he's going to get back to that 2020-2019 status, right? I projected him to have way too early projections, but they're fun to do. 4,400 yards, 30 touchdowns, and like eight interceptions. So not quite where he left off in 2020 because this will be his first season starting, you know, week one for Cleveland. But he's going to build back up to that, and he's going to return to that three-time Pro Bowl level he was with the Texans, right? Deshaun Watson is going to get back to being an elite quarterback. That is something that I will stake my reputation on, stake my sports fandom on. He is going to return back to the top of the mountain. Was he there last season? No. No one should tell you otherwise. He had some great moments. He had some great throws. Remember the throw in that like negative 35-degree game at home against the Saints? He just threw a rope across his body to Amari Cooper, I think it was. He had some incredible throws last season. He had some great quarters, but he never quite put it together for a full game against a really good team. That changes this season. Now, I know we have been here before. This is not the first time Browns fans have been told to buy in on a new season, to buy in on this new quarterback or this new coach, whatever it may be. But at the same time, have we really been here before? Have we really been to a spot where the Browns have this loaded of a roster? Sure, there's been times before where it was Johnny Manziel, Baker Mayfield, Brandon Whedon. Those guys can't even hold a candlestick to what Deshaun Watson has already proven in his NFL career. This Browns roster is one of the best in the NFL. Look at it, right? Look at the career accolades amongst all these players. Deshaun Watson, a three-time Pro Bowler. Joel Petonio, two-time All-Pro. Nick Chubb, four-time Pro Bowler and second-team All-Pro last year. Wyatt Teller, we like bitch and moan about Wyatt Teller. He's still a top-10 guard in football, guys. Jack Conklin, a two-time All-Pro right tackle. Amari Cooper, Miles Garrett, the list goes on and on. And now you've got some Super Bowl life in the room with Juan Thornhill who can tell these guys how it gets done in Kansas City and bring that winning culture to Cleveland. This is by far the most talented roster in, I think, franchise history. Yes, I am 25 years old. I am young. I did not get to witness the cardiac kids in their you know, prime time, in their heyday, whatever. I didn't see it live for myself. But as a prisoner of the moment... This is the most talented team this fan base has ever seen before. And the beauty is, it was talented last year, right? I remember giving lots of rah-rah speeches last year, but this year really does feel different. And I know I'm just, you know, pulling your leg a little bit, but look at the additions that Andrew Barry made this offseason. He's on Twitter. He heard us loud and clear after last season. This defensive line needs to be improved. No problem. Let me go get Dalvin Tomlinson to sure up the run game. Miles Garrett needs someone opposite him who can actually get after the quarterback. No problem. I'll go get Oba Okoronko. Can we do anything else? Yeah. How about Darius Smith, a guy who has 10-plus sacks in three out of his last four seasons? Okay, now that we've turned our attention to the draft, who can we get? One other run stopper? How about this 330-pound monster out of Baylor named Ika? Thank you. You want some Super Bowl blood? Juan Thornhill. You want some speed in the wide receiver room? Elijah Moore, Marquise Goodwin. And you want the best player available when you're picking on the board at 67 or 74? Cedric Tillman. The only thing standing in this team's way, in my opinion, is how difficult the AFC is. How loaded the AFC North is, right? If Kenny Pickett and the Steelers are the worst team in the division, imagine how they would be in, say, the NFC North or the NFC South, right? A lot of other divisions, they would probably be competing for first in. But because Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson are all standing around, small hands pickets. Yeah, he is going to have a, t the, the Steelers are going to have a difficult time climbing their way out of the cellar. And that just goes to show how difficult the AFC is, right? Because even when you get out of the division, still have Kansas City, the reigning Super Bowl champs. And then you got the Buffalo Bills knocking on the door. The Dolphins for shits and giggles. If they put together a healthy two a season, remember how well they started last year? 
Remember the Browns game after the bye last year? Like that, in my opinion, is the biggest hurdle. It won't be because the Browns are going to get in their own way a a bunch. It's going to be because they play a lot of tight, close games, and you might not always get the bounces you need. So that, in my opinion, is the biggest fear I have for the Browns in 2023. Now, speaking of 2023, I was thinking about this yesterday. Just I cannot wait to get back to football. Watch parties, the best way to take the game in. Hanging out with me with the game on the TV if you're able to watch it there. If not, I'll give you my live play-by-play. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, this is your time to do so. That way, when the Hall of Fame game against the Jets rolls around, you don't even remember that you subscribed, but boom, the watch party pops up, and we get to enjoy Kellen Mond and Josh Dobbs and DTR slinging the ball around a little bit together. So hit that sub button down below. Now, another reason to subscribe is we're all about giving back here at the channel. I want to give some shout-outs to some recent subscribers we have picked up. Garrett Hoffman, appreciate you. Young City, Paco Boy 91 Outlaws Gaming, Kevin Rojas, Jonathan Rupert, Tom Cass, Brett, Wa- Brett Brent Watson, Andrew McMillan, Andrew McMillan, and Josh Barry. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and helping support the channel by clicking that big button. I've got one more thing I want to add to this, you know, rah-rah speech about the Browns being legit in 2023. Is there a bit of a changing in the guard in sports right now? I know that you can't quite connect the dots from the NBA to the NFL, and it's not that simple. But at the same time, look at the Western Conference standings this season. Who are the top four teams? The Denver Nuggets, who have never made it to the NBA Finals before, except for this year. Memphis Grizzlies, Sacramento Kings, Phoenix Suns. If I told you guys three, four years ago, these four teams would be at the top of the Western Conference, you would have laughed at me. But it just goes to show that you get some star players like the Nuggets have and the Grizzlies have and the Kings have a good coach. Like Things can turn around really quickly, even if it seems difficult in the moment to believe that. It's not just basketball that's experiencing this. How about the Stanley Cup semifinals, right? The last four teams, Florida, Carolina, Dallas, and Las Vegas. That in and of itself is a crime in Canada, I am sure. Some law in Manitoba has outlawed four teams south of Mason-Dixon to be in the Stanley Cup Finals. But the point is, all four of these teams, were they knocking on the Stanley Cup door two, three seasons ago? No. Did anyone really see the Florida Panthers, who barely missed the playoffs, going to the Stanley Cup Finals? No. The point remains that teams sometimes may not be forecasted to be great, And they might not be in a city or an organization that has a long history of success, but that doesn't mean they cannot rise to the top and exceed everyone's expectations. We've got more on this subject to get to in just a moment, but today's show is made possible thanks to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. When you go to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code Browns125, they hook the dog pound up with a 125% deposit bonus. So what do you want to use that money on? How about game three? It's going to tip off in a couple of hours. I'm riding with the Nuggets. I think they go up on the heat, and they don't look back, and they win this series 4-1. If you want to fade me, no problem. You can roll with producer Rolly's team, the Miami Heat, but I'm on Denver this week. So go to chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Browns125. Lastly, it's not just the NBA or the NHL has seen teams from the seller come to the top. Look at the three juggernauts in football right now. I think we'd all agree the teams to be in the AFC are the Kansas City Chiefs, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Buffalo Bills. But they haven't always been at the top, right? Look at their total record from 2000 to 2016 before they landed, granted, superstar quarterbacks. But still, all three teams were losers, right? They all lost more games than they won in that 16, 17-year stretch. Getting Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow surely helps. But the point remains is it's hard to wrap your head around the Browns getting to that elite status. But I'm sure Bills fans, back when Ryan Fitzpatrick was their quarterback, did not envision them being constantly contending to win the AFC. Or Bengals fans, pre-Marvin Lewis and in between Marvin Lewis a little bit, with Brandon Allen as their quarterback, getting to the top. And the same goes for the Chiefs. Like, even before Alex Smith's days, they were, there was a season they won two games. Landed them first overall pick, got a nice tackle, Eric Fisher. So while it may seem difficult to envision the Browns after 
so many years of heartache and never really even really like never even coming close to the top of the mound, not just heartbreaks in the postseason, but just failure to get off the ground a little bit. All those teams experienced it. All those fan bases experienced it. And what changed? They got some superstar players, and the Browns have that. Deshaun Watson, Amari Cooper, Nick Chubb, Miles Garrett, they're all superstar players. They've got the core now. And just like those fan bases, it might be difficult to picture it now, but in a couple of years, people will look back and kind of forget, Browns used to be a bit of a dumpster fire, but now they've been winning for so long, that's out of sight, out of mind. Same goes for the Bills, the Bengals, and the Chiefs for a long stretch not very far long ago. So for that, with that being said, I'm going to soak this in. I'm going to enjoy it. Yes, it's June. Yes, offenses are supposed to dominate on seven-on-sevens when there is no pass rush and Deshaun Watson can stand back there and it's flag football and that benefits the offense. I don't give a shit, right? Why not enjoy this? Why not watch the offense kick ass and take names as they should? That is the whole beauty of offseason football and practices. When things are good, you, you, you get drunk on it, right? You soak in it, you breathe it all in, you take it all in, you consume it all. When things are bad, you tell yourself, it doesn't matter. It's June. No games are played until September. But I'm going to ride the high because why not? Off-season mode, pick a card time. Now, before we uh, unveil the card, can we throw that up, uh, the next graphic up on screen, McCullough? Because I want to give a special shout-out. We had someone claim they got the right card. Now, this does not mean it's open season for everyone to comment down below once the drawing is done so that they can get a shout-out on the show. But I genuinely believed what Hado the Babe had to say because he said, I don't usually comment on these videos, but I did actually predict the five of spades. There's no way for me to prove it necessarily, but I did pretty cool. And right before we started filming, filming me and producer Tex, we were just randomly picking cards, and I am so sad because I picked the right card when it didn't matter. That was the five of hearts. So, ooh, flip that one over. So, McCullough, what's your uh, what's your card? I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the jack of or the club or jack of clubs. Jack of clubs. Club. Yeah. Okay. Pencil me in for the four of diamonds. One last cut. There it is. Ooh, no good. Nine of clubs. Nine of clubs. All right, that's gonna do it for us on today's show. I hope you guys enjoyed a different style of video, and we'll see everyone later.